up, guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, this character. And yeah, today we're going up against Magma Pulse, who is actually an LBA player, which is a person I've wanted to battle for quite some time, but we really haven't got around to it. Now, finally, we're able to. And of course, that is awesome. That is really great. And he wanted you your game in my stream, and uh, you know, I'm not the one to back down on a challenge. Therefore, here we are. And look into my opponent's team here. We got Chestnut, Tentacruel, Braviary, Houndoom, Galventula, and Crocodile. Now, straight on at it, his best leads here is either Crocodile or the Galventula. And um, I really like the Chestnut core with Tentacruel. They really, really help each other out. So, nice core right there. And um, yeah, Braviary makes sense. Uh, in, a, in a tier where Defog is quite common. Defiant really really helps it out, you know, boosts its immensely high attack of 133 base, which is generally scary, honestly. The Braviary is really cool. It's um, it's too bad it has superpower and not close combat, or that thing would be a hell of a lot of scarier. Anyway, my own team here is of course Rotom, Toxic Rogue, <laughs> Aerodactyl, Empoleon, Hydreigon, and Machamp, of course. And yeah, basically, the only thing I saw here was that my Mega Aerodactyl is pretty much ripping through his team besides Crocodile, so if I get the Crocodile out of the way, I shouldn't have too big of an issue. So yeah, that was my main idea, I was going to leave Rotom, so with all this my guys, let's go! So from the get-go, I am really lucky that he started with Crocodile, which like I said there, is the biggest threat for my team, and uh, I'm predicting him here to go for Stealth Rocks. So I decided to try to pull off a Will-O-Wisp, since I am naturally faster unless he's scarfed, then I shouldn't really have to worry about any physical move from this Pokemon, even if he carried the Stone Edge. So anyway, I get that thing burned, and he actually gonna go for a knockoff. Now, I thought that was really surprising, but at the same time, I get to, I think he wants just to get me down, and get my recovery all gone, if anything. And basically, I need to switch out, so I'm gonna go into, of course, Gyrus, which, uh, with a Choice Band, it's pretty darn intimidating to everything on his team. He has no Pokemon that really want to take a choice band and dynamic punch and risking the confusion. And um, he has to go for Rock Slide here, which I thought was really, really weird, to be honest. So, pretty much, this tells me that it doesn't have the self rocks. This is an anti lead uh, uh, crocodile. And uh, I think he did the right play here and actually falling off the crocodile. Since it was in a position where. No matter what he was gonna do, something would get badly hurt, and then you get the knockoff off, which of course makes my Gaius much, much more less threatening. Now he will go to Braviary. I don't wanna sack my Gaius just yet, so I decided to actually sack my Rotom. Now I do know uh, that unless he's scarfed, I will outspeed him. But if he is, then he's gonna take me out with another Brave Bird because I I was reeling in a faltering move ish. But yeah, he's actually gonna re <laughs> retake that Pokemon, which means it's probably just banded, I guess, since I am very, very defensively. I think so at least. I never got that really confirmed. So I'm just gonna go for Volt Switch. That would have not taken out the Brave Braviary, by the way. And since it brings the Houndoom, I know I can bring my Grindelish, the Aerodactyl, and I really don't have to fear uh, the speed tie here, or not the speed tie. Rather, I will have speed no matter what. Now, I decided here to go for a Wing Attack instead of Earthquake thinking that he would switch out to his Chestnut or Braviary, but not only does he stay in, he is also the Mega Houndoom, which is really scary, and um, the Wing Attack doesn't take him out. I was so surprised by that. I score a crit, and it doesn't take him out, and he's going to go for Hidden Power Electric, and it does almost 50%. Yeah, so these two Beasts of the UU is not able to take each other out. <laughs> Though another quick wheel of taking him out. Like I said, he had Braviary and Chestnut, and I did not want to do that play. Now, he's gonna bring the Galventula, and I did not feel safe staying in. If this is a Focus Sash set, then he's gonna take me out. So I'm gonna just sack off Rotom, and he's just gonna go for Thunder. Of course, the land again since he has compound eyes. And down goes the Rotom. But, luckily for me, he is gonna show me one thing. He is Life Orb, which means not only will I outspeed him, of course, but also Stone Edge will take him out. So yeah, there we go, boom. <laughs> so that was of course really, really, really lucky, and I needed to do that play really. That was my only play I had to make. And here comes the Tentacruel, 
and I don't want to stay in. Earthquake might take him out, but not likely. And I decided to go to Gatler, of course it's Toxic Croak, which really can't hurt his Pokemon whatsoever. Now, I'll decide to go for a Sword Stance, and I basically want to set up against this Pokemon, because Stab Moves does not hurt me whatsoever. And he's going for Acid Spray, which at the time I thought was fine. You know why? Because I thought he didn't have the Ice Beam. And um, for the time being, I was pretty feeling pretty darn cool here. But there is the Ice Beam. Yep, yep, yep. And that really, really, really sucked. Now, it does a lot of damage on me. And I am forced here to go for a Sucker Punch. But of course, he switched out. Uh, I'm going to go for another Sword Stance here, though. Because I uh, predicted him to go for a Spike Shield and just break through with a Drain Punch. But no, he'll just go for Lead Seed. I couldn't believe it, so at this point I was like, oh shit, <laughs> damn, I don't know what to do, I mean, he's gonna leech me to death with his next spiky shield, I have to go for Drain Punch, luckily for me, he doesn't have the spiky shield, and which was really, really, really surprising, and of course, that means that we got this in the bag, there is nothing stopping the Toxic Croak now, and I think he felt that too, that wow, I'm gonna go down, so here's the Brave Hero with natural outspeed, and I wanted to go for a Sucker Punch just for the giggles, but he's gonna show me bulk up, so now I'm forced to go for Drain Punch, which I really didn't want to do. Because I thought it was really cheap, and like I said, I really, really wanted to go for Sucker Punches. But nope, we don't get the chance to pull that off, and of course I did decide to go for um, um, a Sucker Punch in case it was Scarfed. Anyway, I was I was having it back in my mind, if it was Bandit or Scarf, but eventually it shows me the bulk up, which means that it's a different set. Probably Sheer Force Life or I guess. If maybe, probably not either, actually, if I'm thinking about it. Anyway, his last Pokemon, the Blue Bell, is not either gonna take up the Frame Punch, and that is game out of the way. So, yeah, <laughs> Magma Pulse, thanks so much for this battle. And honestly, uh, I think these last turns really just were. I, I had a chance to set up, and I took it, and it did work. I think if you had um, gone for um, another Acid Spray on me. Things might have turned ugly, but luckily it didn't do that, and I was very, very glad that you know, I didn't lose this battle. That this could have turned really ugly, honestly. So yeah, what to say about this game? Uh, I guess I can do the easy route here and just say it as it is. I had a superior matchup. Like, every Pokemon on the team, besides Crocodile, was beaten by, of course, the monster that is Aerodactyl, and uh, he couldn't fend that off properly. There was no way he was going to pull that off. I was naturally outspeeding the Galvantula, and uh, Galvantula might have been his only real response to it. So, um, I was really glad it wasn't Focus Dash, of course, because I would have been forced to play around that. It being Life Orb set meant that I didn't have to worry about speed, I just needed to worry about hitting it. And luckily I did, and after that there was not, nothing really stopping either Aerodactyl or Toxicroak, which freely could set up against the majority of his Pokémon from there on. And of course, poor Tentacruel. It is a very good Pokemon, but at the, this battle it just turned to be a setup fodder. And that was probably not what my opponent was hoping for. <laughs> but I like the Acid Spray combo, I think it was a really cool idea. And yeah, I think in a regular game that would have paid off. Unluckily for him, this was not one of them. And yeah, I guess that will do for all. I'm Like I said, Magma, I had a superior matchup and sometimes that is... That is all you need. Um, I'm sure I'll get revenge eventually with this one. I'm pretty sure about that. So yeah, I want to thank you for watching, guys. And of course, make sure to check out my post channels, which is going to be linked down below. And for everybody else, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.